All right, continuing on with the countdown, uh, part four, the final part of this particular video series is gonna feature cards ranked number 75 to 51 in the collection. Start off with this Ryan Sandberg rookie card here, PSA 10, and this was self-submitted. Um, and this card came from a vending box, and I was surprised I got the 10. I knew it looked good, but I didn't think it was gonna be a 10. So um, nice to see that. The vending box was purchased probably close to 30 years ago from Mark Murphy, the baseball card kid. Remember that guy when he was in Connecticut? I think the vending box was like $70. Kind of sticks in my head a little bit. And I wanted to get the Gwyn, but I guess the Sandberg is not a bad one to get either. So um, number 74, little Pete Rose. Nice card. Sixty-five tops. I collect Pete Rose a little bit. I'm not a fan of all his cards, and I've probably mentioned on more than one occasion that I considered the idea of putting together his run. But not unlike Nolan Ryan, he just has so many cards, and I just decided against it because a lot of his later years cards just don't appeal to me. So here's Tom Brady, 2001 Upper Deck Rookie FX, one of his very few issued cards from 2001. There may be like two or three others. Tom Brady. More mantle here. This one, the 54 Bowman. PSA 4. Centering is as good as it's going to get, I think, for a 4. And right after that is the 55 Mantle. PSA 5.5. Both of these cards, I kind of have... I have apparently a $2 delta between the two of them. I don't know why. Maybe just so I could categorize them um, one above the other. But this one, they're about 14 60-ish range, I think I put these guys at. Which may be different now. I don't know. In prior videos, I've mentioned I, uh, I'm using older pricing here, and I haven't taken the time to update it. So, But in the grand scheme of things, how much variance is there going to be between where these cards would actually fall today versus where I have them here now, right? So here's a LeBron James. That's another crazy... Co any, any basketball card went nuts during the COVID boom. This one might have touched about $5,000. Uh, it regularly sold for like two to $3,000. Uh, now, maybe less. What did I put this one at? Um, LeBron James, I have it at $1,490. $1,490. So, not sure if that's still the case. Here's Ted Williams. This was one of my... I've done this twice. Actually... Three times now, uh, buying a Beckett slab, cracking the card out, and sending it off to PSA. This was a BVG 4, if I recall. And I expected it to come back one grade lower, and it did. But I much prefer it in the PSA slab than that, that Beckett brick. Um, that was my least favorite slab. Um, so there's Ted Williams. It's my only mantle autograph. I have it on a 91 Topps Archives card. Hopefully the integrity of that signature holds up. It seems to be, you know, the ink with this glossy surface. I'm not sure what kind of chemical reactions might happen over the years, but it seems like it's fairly intact. I certainly don't keep it exposed to UV or anything like that, so. Uh, up next, after the Mickey Mantle, I got that number 67, Jackie Robinson from 1956 Topps. Jackie's last tops card, I believe, yeah. I think my thought process was like, yeah, I want to get a Jackie Robinson card. And at the time, this was, I guess, within my budget. This 400, I want to say 475 uh, is what I paid for that. Um, and I think I might have just preferred this one over the, the 55. Because I had that little action scene going on here. Here's Unitas. This was a bought too soon. I we were still we we're coming out of COVID, but we weren't out of it yet. So probably on paper, unrealized loss. This was like twenty twenty one hundred twenty one hundred dollars is what I paid for it. Something like that. And nowadays I would say, and this might be a little bit uh optimistic. I've got this one at uh fifteen fifteen. Um, I guess maybe because of the centering, I, I just put my own little premium on that, but whatever. I'm not selling it, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, Rod Carew, rookie card, 67 tops. 
Is this guy underrated? I don't know. Great hitter, that's for sure. Featured with Hank Allen. 1967. This is really cool because this has got two first ballot Hall of Famers basically on the same rookie card from 2001. Tops traded Ichiro and Albert Pujols, mint nine. Um, ten grades th uh, are just through the roof for this. Th th this card is so prone to chipping. Really tough to get in high grade. The centering isn't even that great on this one. You see, if you hold it like this, left and right, it's... And I'm wondering if that maybe is why it's not the 10. Because it's really nice otherwise. And so I had a little project where I went and I purchased this one. This might have been the last one I acquired. I have the, the Ichiro base, the Pujols base, and then this one. This was like 200 and something dollars. I remember going back and forth with the seller, um, trying to come to agreement. Now, at the time, that was... I think his ask was higher than market value, right? Um, so we're talking, you know, seven, eight, maybe, I mean, I don't know. COVID really screwed with the timeline in my head. So what well, I might say something was like four years ago, it's probably like eight years ago, you know? Um, <clears throat> but anyhow, uh, that that was the, the last gold card I needed from that little run of three featuring those two guys. Um, okay, so here at number 63, this is a card I'm going to submit for review. I'm not going to crack it out, but, um, I, and I remember when, when I purchased it, I asked the seller, like, what is wrong with this card? I mean, why is it only a seven? Cause this is a incredibly sharp, you know, like it just came out of a pack yesterday type of card. He said there are some snow, which I don't, maybe, maybe it is snow. I thought that maybe there's some slight registration issues here, but I don't know why it's just the seven. So I'm going to resubmit this at some point for review. And, you know, if it comes back to seven, fine. But I wouldn't be surprised if I got some kind of bump. You know, 61 mantle. And, uh, yeah, not my nicest centered mantle that I own. If I were to go through and look at all those all over again. And uh, more mantle here. Uh... Might have searched the longest for this card because it's hard to find perfectly centered. And this was probably the best I was going to do at the time for the price point. It was like $575. Um, really old flip, too. Um, yeah, I mean, it's not perfect by any means. And there is some, a little bit of snow, I guess. But it was fine. Took a while to find that one. At least one that I liked. Here is the aforementioned Ichiro base card, tops gold, PSA 9. And this one checks in at number 61, <clears throat> which means number 60 is my Henderson rookie card, PSA 9. Bought a long time ago. A long time ago. It was, um, I want to say $275. And, you know, they were everywhere for that price. I mean, it's still, the card is still everywhere. I mean, it's gone up a lot, but um, it's not like it's rare by any means. Here's a maze from 54, PSA 6 with semi-decent centering. Nice color. Checking in at number 59. And here's pool holes. So this one, what I have is valued at. Seventeen hundred dollars, seventeen fifty is where I have this one. I haven't checked in a while. Um, Ichiro is going to get elected to the Hall of Fame, so I suspect some of these Ichiro cards that I've just shown are going to probably see a little bit of a spike. Usually, what happens? It bumps up, and then it goes back down, and then a new floor is established. But now that they're in the Hall of Fame, this is a sharp-looking card. Tops traded gold, Albert Pujols. Here's a beater. That's my Walter Johnson. Very generous 1.5 grade, in my opinion. I mean, I'm sure it meets the standards for a 1.5, but good grief. I mean, <laughs> it's a beater. I mean, it's almost borderline authentic. I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> thing is, thing is rough. Um, okay, Walter Johnson. 
Number 57. Number 56 is Joe Montana. Nice rookie card here. Tough to find perfectly centered. Even this one isn't. But it was good enough for me. Joe Montana card. Rookie. Tough one to, to value this guy here. Um, this is Bill Dickey from U.S. Caramel. I mean, the centering's dead nuts. This was pretty... Yeah, it has this... Um, I didn't buy it from PWCC. I bought it from somebody who apparently bought it from PWCC. And um, I think the reason why I got the five is, you know, even though it looks four sharp corners here in the front, I did scrutinize a little more, and there's some slight, I don't know if you could see that, but just some slight rolls of paper back here on the corners, which maybe uh, justifies the five grade, but. Yeah, it's my lone US caramel card in my collection. Certainly would like to have that Ruth. Uh, that that ship sailed quite some time ago and is not returning to port. So, um, what are we down to? The last uh, one, two, three, four cards here. So this is going to be number fifty-four, and it is my Jimmy Brown rookie card. And a four, and I paid twenty-six hundred dollars for this. Now fours are like. I don't, well, <clears throat> fours in general are like, I think a thousand something, like like way less than what I paid. But, you know, this is one of those cards where, you know, you got to look at some things like the registration oftentimes is a blurry mess. Uh, snow in the black background. Centering is an issue. So um, is it still worth $2,600 today? I don't know. I have it at, um, uh, I have it at 1800 here on this particular uh, spreadsheet. So, and I think regular, just the generic fours go for like 1400 or so. But anyway, Jim Brown, really nice card. One of my favorite vintage football cards. Ernie Banks, rookie, 54. $875 purchase price from Red Zone, who I don't know if they're even still around. I haven't looked. My head is full of useless facts and figures. This is why I could call this data. Insignificant data. I should remember I can't remember like my anniversary or birthdays or things, but I can remember what I paid for a card like nine years ago. <laughs> so there's Ernie Banks rookie card. And then number 52 is another rookie card, Reggie Jackson. And um, when I bought this was like this is like seven hundred dollars, seven maybe just under eight hundred bucks for this, and the eights were twice as much. So at the time of purchase, I think eights were like sixteen hundred price range, and I thought, you know what, get this at half that price. Well, I I just totally it's like good value with that. I thought so. Um, so that was eight hundred dollars saved. I forgot. I probably put it towards something else. But a nice rookie card from Reggie Jackson there, 69 tops. And then lastly, card number 51 in my collection is Nolan Ryan from 1971 tops. And it's not centered the best. Maybe what, 60 40 left, right? And um, man, very slight. It's hard to see if it is there. But anyway, as everybody knows, these are very hard to get in high grade. And most of my 71s, I do target eight grades. Um, there's a few that I have in 7.5. This one is really nice. This was not cheap either. This, I wanna say $400 for this guy um, when I bought it, which was kinda high at that time. But anyway, that will conclude it. So that takes us up to the top 50, which will air, supposedly, when we get around to it, air across five videos me and three other guys uh, on Mike's channel. Um, eventually, I mean, at this rate, probably won't be till after, probably won't be till January. I don't know. We'll see. We'll try to pull it together sooner than that. But anyway, that that concludes this four-part series. Counting down 150 to 51. Thanks for watching. I will talk to you later.